In this interview, I'm talking with Darlene Hildebrandt. We're talking all about, should you go pro? And also, is it time to upgrade your camera? This is Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of TWIP. I'm here with my friend, Miss Darlene Hildebrandt. Darlene and I are gonna talk about the idea of, well, first of all, we're gonna talk about a bunch of stuff. And one of the things is, should you go pro? The other thing is, should you upgrade your camera considering all the kerfluffle that's happening in the industry right now? Darlene, let's start with just some quick introductions. I've known you, I was looking back through my emails in anticipation of this interview. And I think I've known you for for like eight years or something. What? It's been a That's long crazy. time, uh, like at least five. I think the first email I saw at a glance was like 2013 or something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah it's been a while. And so I out in Vegas. Yeah, did a lot. that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so um, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. Likewise, so it's good to be back. likewise, Thanks. it's really good to see you. So give give the audience a little. Who is Darlene Hildebrandt? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I've kind of been there, done it all. Um, background is I did portrait and wedding photography for years and commercial stuff. And I've been an industry rep. I've worked at a camera store. And my latest claim to fame is for the last five years, I've been the managing editor of Digital Photography School, yeah. as well as running my own site, Digital Photo Mentor. And as of in the next, literally as we're talking, the next nine days, I am leaving DPS and going, going solo, flying solo on on my own and uh, expanding my empire shall we say That's and cool. doing more photo tours and workshops and and meeting with all the great twip family people hopefully I love it I love it yeah well welcome welcome to the fray um, you know and that 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 was one of the, the the driving forces behind this conversation your transition from you know a, a kind of pseudo corporate right you're not mm -hmm. you weren't really reporting to a cube every day because the digital photography school is down in australia for the yeah. most part right and, and i'm in canada and, and you're I, on the I other side of the, the planet or wherever i want yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so you can work wherever your laptop is and you have internet connection exactly, exactly. um but uh with that you know i wanted to talk about i want to start this off with the idea of going pro right and what that means exactly in the photography world if someone says you know what i want to go pro i'm stuck on you know i, I want to build my origin story i'm peter parker stuck in this classroom and i want to be spider-man how do they go from being a mortal to being a unencumbered superhero what do you think well, I think the first question they want to ask is, should they go pro? Because yeah. um, I actually get a lot of, of similar questions in my classes and my workshops about, you know, I'm thinking about, I want to do this part time. How do I get some gigs? And the biggest thing that I've seen over the years and the biggest mistakes people make is they are really good at photography, not so good at business. Yeah. And if they've never been an entrepreneur or never been a business person, maybe like you said, they're coming from the corporate world. They don't know how to run their own business, do accounting, do marketing. Marketing and now, you know, online marketing, every the, the game has changed completely, right? Yeah. You know, you got to know how to be a social media expert. You got to know how to do WordPress. You got to know like all these things, Email, right? Make yeah. podcasts and mm -hmm. videos and yeah, everything. So, um, my first thing that I would say back to somebody that's considering going professional is, why? Why do you want to do that? You know, and sometimes the answer is, well, because I want to do more photography. I want to do it full time, and I want to make full my photography my life, like mm -hmm. my full time life. Yeah. And the the thing that I say to that is that the business quote of photography is ninety percent business and ten percent photography. Yeah. So if you're in a job now and you're doing it a hobby as a hobby on the weekends, or you know you're out shooting once a week, or or you know a couple times a week you're probably doing more photography than if you start your own business mm -hmm. and and the game changes because now you're not shooting for yourself you're shooting to please somebody else right, right? and it's a whole different ball game yeah <clears throat> yeah you're absolutely right and that it reminds me of this book i read i think it was in rich dad poor dad you ever you ever read that book yeah yeah i love that and i and i think if it's if it's that book the there's this part where he's talking about Bless you. I see you on camera. Uh, you're talking about the uh, you're talking about the idea of when you're doing something that you love, right? Uh, you you're doing it for the love of, which is the definition of amateur for the love of doing something. Um, but the minute that you incorporate business into it and you have to do it, 
and you know, you're paying your mortgage, your car payment, eating, clothing yourselves, doing the Maslow's hierarchy of needs based on what you used to love, you tend to not love it anymore. So exactly. in, yeah, in that book, they were saying, be careful about going from something that you love and trying to make it into a profit generating passion because you may start to to resent that thing, right? You start to hate that thing, totally. And I've seen, and maybe you have as well, so many photographers burn out, right? Because there's studies been done on like the average wage of photographers, the average number of hours that they work. And the last time I looked at a study like that, it was something like 70 hours a week average. Mm -hmm. And most photographers make less than 40 grand a year, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's not, it's not a great wage, you know, and, yeah. I mean, that's, that's barista there. money right that's, there. Or yeah, you, know, you can make more driving Uber, exactly. right? Or coffee. Exactly. Yeah. Uber, yep. you know, like I was just in New York city, um, we could go and I had an Uber driver and I asked her, you know, do you do this full time? And she's a mom and she said it fits in perfect. She drops her kids off for school. Uber's till they're done school, picks them up from school. You know, it's perfect. Yeah. So doing photography is not a it's don't take it lightly to go professional right because like you what you said is it's going to become your bread and butter mm -hmm. and if you're leaving a corporate job let's say you're making 50 60 70 80 thousand dollars a year you got to replace that income right yeah. Yeah. and you got to figure out how much photography and how many gigs do i have to do am i doing portraits am i doing weddings am i doing commercial am i what am i doing right am i doing a travel photography and it's so competitive now like i will tell you that i was talking with a friend of mine um in the wedding who still does weddings and i would say that the prices are easily 30 percent lower than when i left the game in 2006. wow so 12 years ago i was charging more for weddings than they're charging now that's crazy and you know the other thing the other leg of this is you know the romanticism of moving into being a solopreneur or an entrepreneur or somebody that works for themselves it's great because you're like oh, you know i don't have i won't have a boss i don't have to report to anybody you know i'll make my own hours yada 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 and all that's true <laughs> it's all true right yeah. but on the other hand you can't have an off day right so if you're salaried and you're like you know what <sighs> I don't feel like going to work today. I think I'm going to just lay in bed and play Fortnite all day, you know, or <laughs> or something like that. You can't yeah. do that because, you know, you stop. Binge watch Walking Dead on Netflix. <laughs> exactly. Because if, if your hamster wheel stops spinning, mm -hmm. the money stops coming out the other side. Right? Totally. So what totally. do you say to those people? I mean, like, how do you, because there's, there's, you know, we're painting kind of a bleak picture, but there's also a positive picture on the side. There's lots of success stories of people that make a go of this and, you know, and make a lot of money and they become happy and fulfilled and all that stuff. But how do you how, how do you know? How do you bridge that gap? Yeah. Well, or, and, yeah. And but how do you know? How do you make the determination? Like, yeah, I'm ready A to go pro and mm -hmm. and B, the money's in it and I'm not going to screw up my 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 beautiful passion of photography by attaching a dollar value to it. Well, the biggest piece of advice, um, two pieces of advice I would give people is one I got from somebody else and I will pass it forward is um, purchasing decisions on, let's say you're deciding to buy something, which is our other piece of our talk today is, you know, when do you upgrade your cameras? And I find that in today's digital world, everybody upgrades way more often than we did with film. Like yeah. I never upgraded my film cameras. There was no need ever. You know, you buy a camera, that's your camera for life. Like mm -hmm. my Hasselblad, it's still in the closet. You want to see it? <laughs> it's yeah. like, um, but with digital, you're constantly buying new stuff, right? So the advice that I got was, if you're making a major purchase, now defining major, I'm talking like over $1,000 or more, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that could be a computer, that could be a camera, that could be a car, that could be whatever, yeah. or even spending advertising dollars. The guy that gave me this advice was um, a marketing guy that we hired, and he said, does it do one of two things? Does it save you money? by buying this thing? Does it save you time, which is then also saving you money? Or does it help you make money, right? right. So right. let's say, you know, you're you're buying, I don't even know, a, a new camera. Is, is it gonna do any of those things? No, yep. right? Can you make do with the camera that you still have? Probably, right? right? right. And we can segue into that in, in our second part of our talk. And the other piece of advice that I would give to people is, if you absolutely truly want to go into business and be a professional photographer, most people are self-employed and they do it themselves. Mm -hmm. There's very few jobs in the industry to work for somebody else. You know, you're gonna be an assistant to some big name photographer or you know, something like that, but that's not a long-term job. And mm -hmm. for a lot of my students, uh, I mean, they're you know semi-retired 
retired or or even retired people want to go and do professional photography they don't want to go be assistant for somebody else right right, right. so I would say the first thing you have to do is take some business courses, you know, learn about marketing, learn about psychology of selling, learn how to be a salesperson. And people hate that term and they hate to think about sales, but, and that's the, that's the killer right there. Yeah. If you're averse to doing sales and you cannot sell something to somebody, you're going to fail, yeah. right? Yeah. Cause if you've got a person, if I'm trying to sell you a portrait, I just did your family portrait, Frederick, and I want to sell you a 30 by 40, right? If I say, I look you in the eye and I say, that's going to be $900. And then I, and then I choke on it or I say, Oh, but you know, for you, I want to give you a discount, mm -hmm. right? I've already, I've already lost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You or, or, or more likely is what a lot of, a lot of people that I know and, and, and that aren't good at selling themselves, what they would be, what they would say is, you know what, 900 bucks, what, whatever you think is fair, you know, <laughs> and yeah. let, let them set the price. Right. Whatever They're you think is fair. They're the friend of the friend that referred them or, you know, like you can't, you, ha you can't do that in business. No. So if you're going to be pro, take some business courses, learn about some basic accounting, make sure you have a plan for, you know, putting aside money for taxes. I've seen photographers get burned on, on paying their, like up here in Canada, we have GST. Um, they don't put their money aside or, you know, like wedding photographers, you collect a lot of money up front. Then later on, you got to produce an album. Well, they've spent that money. Now they no. don't have the money to produce the album. So, you know, budgeting stuff. Like yeah. it's, it's, it seems like common sense. Yeah. It's that um, fundamental stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of the books, another book. So we, I mentioned uh, rich dad, poor dad. Mm -hmm. There's another one called think and grow rich. That's good as well. Classic. Right. Yeah, it's a classic. And in Thinking Grow Rich, Carnegie, Dale Carnegie, right? Yeah, I think it's Dale Carnegie. Or maybe Dale Carnegie. I don't know. He did. He did win friends and influence people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but Thinking Grow Rich, he's talking about the idea of of depreciating versus appreciating assets when you're making purchasing decisions. And he was basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he's basically saying, rich people buy things that gain value over time. Exactly. Poor people buy things that lose value boats, <laughs> over cars. time. Yeah, yeah, boats, cars, rims, you know, all this crazy stuff. You buy that stuff and you know, as soon as you, you know, a week later, it's worth a third of what it was when you purchased it. Other people that are making money, they buy things that, you know, two years later, it's worth, you know, an eighth more than it was yeah. when you purchased it. So, yeah. and that's kind of hard, you know, you think of, how do you apply that to photography in the photography world? And it's exactly what you were saying. What's right? a good investment? Yeah. yeah. What's a good investment? Is this going to make me money? Is this going to, is this an asset or a liability back to accounting 101, right? Is this exactly. a, is an mean, asset or a liability? In, things in my career that I invested in that were worth the money were like marketing courses. Uh, I took a basic way back when I took a basic accounting course and actually did my books on paper, believe it or not. Nice. Um, and then I switched into like, you know, simply accounting or whatever. But by doing that, it gave me a really good understanding of, of, you know, how it works and, when I go to my accountant, it's not Greek to me, and he's mm -hmm. telling me these things, right? You know, I, I understand what he's saying. And I, and I Googled it, by the way. It's Napoleon Hill is thinking Grow Rich. Oh, yeah, think Grow Rich. Yeah. So I was Googling while you were talking. Um, and the, the other, you know, the other piece of advice is, like I said, take, take, spend money on education, right? Don't buy more, more stuff. And the, the final, you know, piece I'd like to say about to go pro or not is I think that some people get in their head that, in order to feel like a real, quote, real photographer. Because I'll say to people, well, you, you are a photographer. And they're well, like, no, I'm not. I'm not really a pro. I don't get paid. But you're a photographer. You take pictures. Therefore, you are a photographer. Yeah. And they don't feel like they're a, quote, real photographer unless they're making money at it. Like, they feel like they need somehow to that validation. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody's paying for your pictures, therefore, you, you've arrived, yeah. right? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And... You know, I, I hear the same things, and the, and the the response that I give those people is, you know, I remember when I was working on Adobe, and we had we had the market segmentation studies of who's who. You know, there was the beginners, the uh, amateurs, advanced amateurs, pros or semi pros, and pros, right? And out of all those, you look at those, and you look at the data based on who's enjoying photography and art the most. Mm -hmm. And it's the amateurs. Always. Right? Because it's the people that haven't attached a dollar value or a time. Oh, I got to get this, this wedding edited, you know, or I'm not going to make money on it. Or I have to do it quicker. Yeah. 
and not spend time on it. The amateurs are like, you know what? I could spend a week on this one photo trying to get this telephone pole removed from this head as I learn how to use the clone tool, you know? And then they end up with a better finished product. It may have taken yeah. them two weeks. A pro could, can't take two weeks to do one job, right? They'll lose, they'll lose clients, they'll lose money. So, you know, when people say, hey, I, I, wanna, I wanna be a professional photographer, in a lot of ways that has a negative connotation to me because professional means, you know, time to make the donuts, gotta rush mm -hmm. it out. Whereas amateur mm -hmm. means I'm an artisan and I'm doing this solely because I love doing it, not mm -hmm. because there's a profit motive behind it, right? So, all right, I let's- actually, um, I actually wrote a blog post um, two weeks ago about doing photography just for just for the heck of it. Yeah. And it literally took me 30 years to get there. Um, I'll, I'll share a link with you uh, if you yeah, wanna, if yeah, you wanna share it, it because yeah. there was a good discussion about, you know, like why do you photograph, right? And, and I think it plays into this, do you need to go pro to enjoy it um, or do more of it? And I think, you know, you don't, but it took me 30 years to get to the point where I can just take a photo and then never look at it again. You know, if it lives on my phone or my hard drive and I never see it again, that's fine. Yeah. But for me, um, if you've ever done any stuff around personality types, I'm a creator personality type. So I have the desire, I have the burning need to create things. Yeah. So just in that moment, I created that picture and that was, I'm done with it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the process of creation versus the final product itself that is the yeah. driving force. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, before we run out of time, I want to I want to segue this conversation into uh, cameras and upgrading your camera, like we talked about in the beginning. So let me set the stage. Over the past couple of weeks, or actually this month in general, has been ridiculous in the <laughs> photography industry, as yeah. you know, right? So we've had Nikon with their Z series, uh, the two Z series bodies that they announced. We've uh, just yesterday we recorded TWIP episode five thirty three, where we talked about. Fuji and they released the X-T3 and then also Canon announced the EOS R, which is another mirrorless camera. So part of the things that, one of the things that I posited in the, in the discussion last night was what's, what's going on, A, is it, is it that these giants have finally woken up and did they wake up too late, you know, because <laughs> Sony has already sitting on their mountain eating their lunch or, mm -hmm. or what? So before we dive into, you know, is it time to upgrade? What do you think about that? I mean, overall, is, it, is this an exciting time for photographers or is this going to generate more analysis paralysis in terms of all the decisions and, and choices you have with regard to the camera you buy? I'm going to say the latter. <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> the latter because... And, and the other thing, I mean, are you familiar with, with gas, right? Gear yeah. acquisition oh, syndrome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a major problem. And I see so many people. Uh, I personally have a general rule is I skip a generation, right? So mm. I'm still hanging on to my X-T1, my Fuji X-T1. Um, I bought that sucker in 2014, I think. Nice. And um, in addition to my Canon 5D3 at the time, and I literally held on to it for, I finally sold my Canon stuff last year. So I still held it for three years, but I wasn't using it. It was sitting on a shelf, gaining dust. And the only time I literally took it out was to go teach a class. And I'm like, but can I do the same thing with my Fuji? Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. So I finally sold off all my Canon stuff and now I've got some nice, you know, cash in the bank to pay for my X-T3. Yeah. Uh, but I generally skip a generation, right? And the reason that I would upgrade is um, and I talked about, I have an article on this too, is, you know, is it time to upgrade or not? Uh, is, is your camera failing, right? Because digital cameras have a lifespan. So is your camera failing? Is it failing you in some way? You know, like, is, is it so old that your low light capabilities just are not up to par um, and you need something newer? Or would, before you look at a camera upgrade, maybe you need better glass, yeah. right? I would highly advise people to invest in better glass because you don't need to update that, yeah. right? Get yeah. a 2.8 lens, get a good lens that's going to serve you well instead of upgrading your camera every year. Like it's crazy, yeah. you know? So I've gone four years without upgrading mine. What yeah. about you? And, that, and that's the smart way. That's the, 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 that's a brilliant way. I like the skipping the upgrades is, is so smart. And then also on the other side is, is, is the, like if you're looking at a new camera, is it just because you have gas? You know, you have gear acquisition <laughs> syndrome, or is they have medication for that? Yeah, I know, you know, gas X. Or is it is is the new camera going to allow you to do something that you've been wanting to do but couldn't because of the limitations of your current right. system? 
Right. right? Like, like there's does it have sh- better video and you want to get into video or does it do time lapse or exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or you want to do astrophotography and you're shooting yeah. like me. I'm shooting astro I wanna I'm shooting Michael Four Thirds, I shoot Lumix and I wanna shoot astrophotography and I need a bigger sensor. Yeah, you know, I could do it with the smaller sensor, but I wanna I wanna really do it, so I need a bigger sensor camera. So what are you gonna get? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I don't know, but I need something with a bigger sensor, but I don't know what I want. I like the Panasonic menuing system, but you know, I need a bigger sensor than a micro four thirds. Um, but, uh, but that's, those are the walls you hit, you know, I want to do portraiture, but I only have these kinds of lenses. I only have wide angle lenses because I've been doing landscapes, but now I want to do portraiture. Now I need to think about, you know, investing in lenses. So you add that way versus the other way that I see people doing is like, Oh, DJI released a new drone, must buy a new drone, go buy it, right? Oh, there's a new camera out coming from Nikon, must buy it. And then, you know, it just kind of sits there like Batman. He's like, I use the analogy of Batman. You know, Batman has all, has his cave with every toy imaginable Mm -hmm. for fighting crime in there, just in case something happens. Batman is the just in case guy, right? Yeah. But, you know, photographers can't afford to be the just in case person. (laughs) You gotta have a mission. Especially, you know, go back to the amateur pro thing. If you're doing it as an amateur, how much money do you want to spend on a hobby, number one? I mean, if you've got unlimited funds, you know, Know, great go fill your boots right yeah. but if you're if you're a pro you got to make that money back and yeah. that's something else people forget to put in their budget right like what are your your monthly expenses what are your fixed expenses what are your you know recurring expenses but also what are you spending on gear every year you got to build that into your expenses and put it in your prices and mm-hmm. I don't see people I don't see photographers doing that and you know they don't make their money back on the stuff they're they're buying right yeah yeah oh, but, but then how do you recommend reconcile that so the first part of the conversation we were talking about going pro but how do you how do you reconcile it as an amateur make because you're not really going to make any money on this new purchase it's more yeah. it's more in service of the art that you that you exactly want to create so how do you what what's the what would you suggest you know like if it's a you you know it's someone yeah. they got an xt what'd you say xt1 uh-huh. right so yeah xt1 and then you skip the two and you went to the you know you're lusting after the three yeah. Is that is that well, the it's flow? Ordered. It's already ordered this morning. It's ordered. <laughs> You're still lusting after. It's not there yet. <laughs> right. It's true. But uh, so should people do that? Should it just be like an every other upgrade thing? I know a lot of people that do that with phones. I mean, as well. that's a good. It's a good sort of starting point. But honestly, like if I feel like the XT1 is still serving me well, mm-hmm. um, but there's a few things about it that the niggling. You know, like I can't open the battery compartment without taking the tripod thing off that drives me crazy yeah. like if i have a tripod insert on the bottom it that was a major design flaw that they fixed with the two but it wasn't enough for me to upgrade to the two right, right? now they've got way better autofocus right and i'm kind of struggling with some of the autofocus with the one so i'm thinking okay that's going to solve some of those problems right yeah. so i am having some issues but i also have a plan as i'm thinking i'm going to take my xt1 and convert it into infrared sensor oh, yeah. yeah so you know, I'm, I'm doing something different with it. As an amateur, you really just have to decide how much money do you want to spend on a hobby? You know, like, I mean, there's other hobbies that are expensive too. Like if you ride a motorcycle, you're going to be spending some bucks, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. want to have a, a cabin in the woods or, or a boat. So you get to decide if that's your pleasure point, how much money do you want to spend on that? Yeah. And I would say as an amateur, try not to go crazy, like I said, unless you have unlimited funds which most people don't have um but save some of it for experiences like i love to spend my money um i drive an old car and i i have a house that i can afford because i like to travel so i spend my money going places and doing things and you know ironically enough i bring people with me on these tours now sure. so yeah you know come to india with me or come to we're planning for next year we're working on vietnam and peru and nice. scotland we're working on castles with models and oh. light painting it night yeah so um we got some really cool exciting stuff coming so i would say as an amateur find a balance between having the gear that you need to do the pictures that you know make you happy and have some experiences right get yeah. some go out and go someplace where you can enjoy taking photos and hang out with other photographers and have a great time i love that i love that yeah you 
So use the money that you were going to spend on gas and spend it on airline fuel instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. If you're gonna have to, if you're gonna convert it to fossil fuels, mm -hmm. make it airline fuel and go exactly. go someplace cool and use the gear you mm -hmm. already have. Yeah, that was the other thing. And we'll wrap this up in a second. That was the other thing. People have these, and I'm guilty of this too. So I'm not I'm not some you know guy sitting on the hill. I'm guilty it's of like having fear FOMO, right? Uh, FOMO, uh, fear of missing out, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. FOMO, and then justified with YOLO, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can buy that because, you know, I'm only going to be this mm -hmm. age once. Um, <clears throat> but with that, you know, I, you, you buy this stuff and it, it's, you only scratch the surface of what it can do, right? So you buy this brand new piece of gear and you lust after it and you have the shiny box there and you open it up and you take out the styrofoam and you, you know, and the, 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 the amount of work that these engineers have put into this piece of gear that you have is astounding and you barely touch a little bit of it. It's like the Photoshop thing, right? Well, people have Photoshop that can literally create worlds and they basically only use it to take a wrinkle or two out every now and then, right? right. So, so what about those people? I mean, how do you, I don't know if this is, a, this is related to age because you, know, you get more mature and you're able to hold off more, um, but it, how do you, stave off gas, Darlene? How do you, how do you stave off that, the, like when Apple makes their announcement next week as we record this on the 12th, the, the, the irrational sort of reality distortion field that sets in, that then taps into the uh, gear acquisition and FOMO that makes you want to pull out your credit card? How do you push right. that off and say, you know what, what I have is okay, I'm gonna keep it? Well, it's funny you say that because my uh, I've I've been kind of lusting after the Samsung S7 phone or nine the nine that came out because I have the seven and it's two years old but there's nothing wrong with it and then I'm on my trip to New York last week and my phone started rebooting itself spontaneously and it wouldn't come up like the the screen was there for ten minutes and I'm like oh boy here we go so now I'm kind of keeping an eye on it because um, I'm going to be traveling for a month in November I'm like if this phone is kicking the bucket now, you know, and I have to, I'm going to have to do something. So, yeah. uh, but prior to that, I, I talked myself out of upgrading because I'm like, you know what, there's nothing wrong with it. And then all of a sudden there's something wrong with it. <laughs> so like, ah. as, you're, as you're dragging it behind <laughs> yeah. you with the USB cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, it's so, broken now. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the camera thing, like the people that generally come uh, to my workshops and tours, are, they're amateurs, right? Yeah. Um, occasionally, we get a pro come on a on a tour, and you know they always ask, well, what should we bring? And and I think there's a lot of of this fear of I don't want to leave any lenses at home. I'm going to bring all my lenses, you know. Mm -hmm. And we've had people bring these giant backpacks full of stuff. Like um, I had one guy that that had two camera systems, you know, and even my co-tour leader, he's got the Fuji X-T2 um, and he's getting the three mm -hmm. and he's got the, whatever the, the medium format one, the GX, whatever it is, the Fuji medium yeah. format. Yeah. He's got that too, you know, and then he brings his drone as well and he oh. brings it, you know, so he's got, he's kind of got that is, and I'm, we always laugh about it. You know, I say, Daniel, you gotta kind of, you know, cut it down a little <laughs> bit. Right. Um, but you, there's, I tell people like if I travel, I cut it down to a minimum. Like I went to New York with my X100F. That's it. Wow. You know, my little street camera, and a, and it was great. That's all I needed. And that's what Valerie yeah. Jardin uses on her workshops exclusively, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great little camera. Um, when I was traveling with my Canon, I would take um, like a wide, like a 17 to 35, my 50, and my 70 to 200, and that's it. And people are like, oh, but you got you got spaces, you know, between like 35 and 50 and 50. What? <laughs> I have like, feet too. I can move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Feet, for God's sakes! Like seriously, you know, people forget you don't need to cover every single range, and I and I challenge them to stick on a fifty for a week at home and go out and shoot every day with your fifty yeah. because you're going to start to love that lens or your thirty-five or whatever is your lens of choice because mm -hmm. you're going to get great photos. Are you going to miss the bird photo because you don't have your three hundred? Sure, but if you have a different lens on and the bird flies by, you can't change it and take the shot that quick anyways. Absolutely. So now you gotta have three camera bodies hanging around with one wide lens and one, you know, like the journalists at the sports games, right? With yep. all these 
cameras and the, the 500 mil lens and the 15 over here and then you know and you need a shirt to carry your bag it's yeah just, it's yeah. ridiculous yeah no absolutely and i it, it my background, as many of the TWIP audience knows, is military, right? So I was a, a combat shooter in the Air Force for eight years. And it, it's, it's still to this day, I've been out for several decades, right? So it's still to this day hard to travel and not want to be that guy that's ready for anything. Because that was the mission back then. It was like, okay, you're the photographer on this trip, you need to be prepared for anything you know whether we need landscape shots we need aerials we need this we need that right. whatever and you don't know what you're gonna run into you and yeah there's the unknown right so you don't know what you're gonna hit so you're like okay i gotta make sure i'm covered on this this and this i gotta make sure i have enough film i got all this stuff right so you end up yeah. with a Three wheelbarrow flashes and remotes and a tripod and a monopod and a easily yeah and the video guys are even worse right because their their gear back then was you can imagine you know um, but then you fast forward to today um, and me as a civilian and it's the opposite. It's like I'm moving more towards, you know, I want to see how little I can take and still be happy. Because especially if you go on a dozen or so trips and you pack everything known to man to be ready mm -hmm. and don't use any of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the worst. Like I've been here for 10 days and I've used those two lenses. That's it. And my battery charger. That's it. So. And if you use Lightroom, right, if people are using Lightroom, you can go in and look at all your photos and sort by lenses, right? And you yeah. can see what focal lengths you shoot the most, right? Because, and I tell people to go do that. If you use Lightroom, go use that data, right? And figure out what am I using the most? Like go look at, if you've got a travel folder, go look at that folder and see what you're actually using and take that, Yeah. right? Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, cool. Let's wrap this up. Um, so you mentioned a couple of things that you're gonna you're gonna give me links to to put in the notes and in the description yeah. of the YouTube video. So make I'll give you the one about talking about upgrading, and yep. we can continue the discussion about just shooting for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Please send me those, and then also um, any links to workshops and stuff you have going on. So tell me, you touched on that a little bit, but tell me a little bit more about your workshops and what's happening there. Sure. So for right now, we have um, Morocco spring next year is, is open for booking and um, a Southern Alberta workshop I do is open for booking. That's in spring as well. And in the planning stages, we have wait lists for these things. So that if they're not released yet, they can get their name on the wait list. And what the wait list means is that they're going to get noticed before everybody else and they'll have chance to book it. Sure. And just to give you an idea, like when we released Morocco two years ago, it sold out to the wait list. So the other people, they were like out of luck. Um, so we have Vietnam in the planning stages right now for also late spring t um, next year. Love that place. Scotland, potentially May. Um, and we're looking at Peru in the fall and then we'll repeat India again next probably November We'll have to find out when the festivals are because we rotate around the Pushkar festival mm -hmm. um, So India will happen again and um, Also, I do I'm doing now a British Columbia, which is Western Canada wine and photography workshop So oh. it's five days in wine country. It's very much like, you know, Napa or Sonoma Valley Yeah, um, it's a beautiful countryside and we drink wine um, we have I'm looking that's, forward to this. That's Coming why you want that stuff. XT3 because of the focusing in the wine, right? <laughs> you got me. You got me. <laughs> that's cool. So if people if people want to see, you know, they're not going to remember that stuff most for the most part. Where should they go? What's the URL people should go to? Digitalphotomentor.com. All right. And you can find me as DP Mentor on Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. Darlene Hildebrand, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. It's always good talking to you. And I want to officially and formally invite you to come on This Week in Photo as a co-host when we do our roundtables. Because that's... Sounds uh, good. I'd love to have your voice in, I'd love in to the be fray. Back. Yeah. The voice of reason. We need you. So. <laughs> <laughs> and more uh, females. Yeah, exactly. And more females. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've been trying to mix it up. It's, you know, it's it's challenging. I, to I was get... on Don Komarichka's uh, podcast because he talks about geeky stuff, right? And he's oh, like, I yeah. need more geeky females, right? So I'm like, well, you know, that's me. So yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. The more the world needs more Darlene. So please, <laughs> please make it happen. I, can I clone myself? I need to clone myself. <laughs> hey, if you've done 23 and me, you may already be cloned. So. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. Darlene Hildebrand, thank you so much. This is Twitter.